hello students in this video now we are going to learn about the preparation and the properties of the thiazole thiazole structure is like this this is a thiazole and the formula is c3 h3 c3 h3 n and yes so this is the formula of the thiazole <coughs> now uh, first of all we go for the preparation methods first of all we discuss about the hunk synthesis This is also known as CC plus SCN method. <clears throat> so here in this method we break the molecule like this. Okay. So that's why it is known as the CC SCN method. <clears throat> to provide the CC uh, carbon linkage here we use the alpha chloroacetaldehyde or alpha chloroketones. So here we take the alpha chloroketones or uh, alpha chloroacetone so this is uh, alpha chloroacetone okay To provide the SCN linkage, we use the thiopharmamide. If you write here, oh, that becomes the pharmamide. But here we are writing yes, so that becomes the thiopharmamide. And uh, we get the, what is that? Thiazole derivative. Okay, so here we have tried the CH3. Okay, <clears throat> uh, then we go for the mechanism. So this uh, nitrogen gives this electron pair to this carbon. As a result, this bond breaks and uh, the electron pair shifts uh, onto the oxygen. As a result, we get this compound here. Okay. Now water goes outside, okay, H and OH. So here water goes outside, as a result, uh, okay, and uh, here we are having Cl. Uh, the next moment water means uh, this NH bond breaks, and the bond electron pair shifts here okay and uh, this electron pair shifts to here as a result uh, this chlorine goes outside as a result we get thiazole derivative okay Right H. So here we will write one more H. We forgot to write that one. So we'll get here one H. One H. So this is the thiazole derivative. <clears throat> no, 
now this is in what is that one two three four so four methyl thiazole four methyl thiazole if we take the acetaldehyde then we get the simple thiazole okay now we go for the second preparation method that is the sherni oxysynthesis in sherni oxysynthesis uh, uh, we use the alpha thiocyanoketone okay look here. alpha thiocyanoketone and we treat this with the uh, what is that either acid or base as a result we get the thiazole derivative <coughs> get this alpha thiocyanoketone ketone by treating uh, what is that alpha chloroketone with uh, methyl thiocyanate or any metal thiocyanate not methyl sorry metal thiocyanate thiocyanate okay so the um, for uh, alpha thiocyanoketone we take the alpha thiocyanoacetone so look at this is acetone if you write h here it becomes acetone um, <coughs> this is alpha carbon this is also carbon and here we write the thiocyanate group so look at if uh, treat this with the amino methane ch3 and h2 we get this product look here So this H3 present here and uh, this in chess H3 comes here. Okay. Uh, actually, this is obtained by treating the alpha chloroacetone. This is alpha chloroacetone with uh, sodium thiocyanate. okay now we discuss about the third preparation method that is the cook heel brown synthesis in this method we use the <coughs> alpha amino nitrile okay so okay this is nitrile means a cyanide group so in the alpha position we write the amino group so this is alpha amino nitrile okay alpha amino nitrile we treat this alpha amino nitrile uh, with uh, di thio acids so look here. This is a dithio acid. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, what of means the H2S goes outside. Uh, this is H and uh, one hydrogen from here goes outside. As a result, uh, we get a <coughs> coupled product. Look here. What happens means here <coughs> we write N here and uh, C double bond S yes, and uh, H. Okay. Now we write this C H here. 
and C6H5 and C uh, triple bond <coughs> in here okay C triple bond in uh, next um, what happens means rearrangement takes place and okay we get this product we have to move this one and here we get a uh, C6H5 and uh, we get here this uh, nitrile group changes into the NH2 group okay so M in group will be substituted here so in cook and heal bronze synthesis we get the amino thiols okay now its name is one two three four and five no so five amino four phenyl thiazole okay, no? so in the place of the di thio acids if you use the carbon dioxide or uh, what is that uh, carbon oxy sulfide we get the different products okay now for example if we use the uh, carbon disulfide okay then here we get a thiol group here So the double bond acid is converted into the thiol group. This uh, group is a uh, common. No? Next, if we use the oxy sulfide, oxy, sorry, carbon oxy sulfide, carbon oxy sulfide. This is carbon disulfide. Okay. Now we discuss about the chemical properties of the thiazole. First one of them is the basic nature. Due to the presence of the nitrogen, this thiazole acts as the base. And here the thiazole structure is very much similar to the imidazole and oxazole. So now we compare the basic nature of these three compounds. Okay, na? Here we have to remember that basic nature is directly proportional to the pKa values of the compounds. Uh, <clears throat> pKa value of the thiazole is 2.5 whereas the pKa value of the imidazole is 7.03 and pKa value of the oxazole is the 0.8 so by looking at this pKa values we can say that thiazole is uh, weaker base than the imidazole but a stronger base than the oxazole now we discuss about the electrophilic substitution reactions and uh, in electrophilic substitution reactions the electrophile will be substituted either at the fifth position or on the nitrogen so now we go for the electrophilic substitution reactions in which uh, electrophile is substituted on the fourth carbon first one of them is the sulfonation look here for sulfonation we use the volume volume is a mixture of sulfuric acid and the sulfur trioxide and here we use the mercuric sulfide as the catalyst and we heat the reaction mixture at 250 degrees centigrade as a result we get the 5 sulfur thiazole generally uh, thiazole does not undergo any nitration reaction because uh, it is uh, somewhat less aromatic so that's why uh, <coughs> it does not undergo any nitration reactions but whenever uh, electron donating groups uh, are present in the thiazole it easily undergoes the uh, nitration reactions when it is treated with the mercuric acid in the presence of acetic acid <coughs> We get the 2 comma 4 comma triacetoxy uh, thiazole. Now uh, we go for the reactions uh, in which electrophile is substituted on the nitrogen. First one of them is the protonation. We can consider it as the uh, basic nature also because H plus ion 
act as the acid as well as we can consider it as the electrophile okay na? so here we get the salt thiazolium salt okay na? and here alkylation when thiazol is treated with the methyl iodide uh, methyl group will be substituted on the nitrogen okay na? Uh, in methyl thiazolium iodide okay so this is known as the quaternization reaction next we go for the nucleophilic substitution reactions uh, this <coughs> quaternized thiazole undergoes the nucleophilic substitution reactions for example when we treated with the dilute NaOH uh, we get this product only one hydroxy group will be substituted okay na? so nucleophile here it is the OH minus so OH minus is uh, substituted here okay uh, and uh, <clears throat> when it is treated with the two moles of NaOH uh, first of all we get the uh, this type of product only uh, later on what happens means the ring opening uh, takes place so look here here OH bond breaks here and this electron pair shifts to here and this bond fails and the electron pair shifts onto this uh, sulfur as a result we get uh, this product and uh, here ring is opened okay now this is a chichibobin reaction uh, here 3 methyl thiazole is treated with the sodamide at 150 degrees centigrade so here we get the 2 amino uh, 4 methyl thiazole okay na? this is another nucleophilic substitution reactions and uh, these are some more nucleophilic substitution reactions here uh, thiazole is treated with the n butyl lithium at uh, minus 60 degrees centigrade here we get the uh, 2 lithium thiazole thiazolide or 2 lithium thiazole also we can call okay 2 lithium thiazole and when it is treated with the ethyl magnesium bromide at 0 degree centigrade we get uh, bromo magnesium thiazole derivative Deutero uh, when it is when we treat uh, this thiazole with um, <coughs> deuteromethyl alcohol uh, otherwise methyl deuteroxide we can call it as the methyl deuteroxide and the pH is 11 so we get the 2 deuterothiazole and when the pH is maintained at the 12 to 14 we get the two types of products 2 deuterothiazole as well as the 5 deuterothiazole now we discuss about the displacement reactions when thiazole 2 bromothiazole is treated with the different types of products uh, we get the different products here 2 bromo thiazole is treated with the n butyl lithium we get the 2 lithium thiazole sodium methoxide and we get the 2 methoxy thiazole when is it is treated with the ethyl magnesium bromide we get the bromo magnesium thiazole 2 bromo magnesium thiazole and when it is treated with the amine we get the enalkyl 2 amino thiazole derivative now we go for the uh, reduction reactions <clears throat> when thiazole derivative is treated with the nickel and hydrogen in the presence of alkaline medium uh, first of all uh, what happens means the ring opening takes place like this okay na? here uh, we enol group and enothiol group we are getting okay now after that what happens uh, further reduction takes place and we get a saturated uh, compound like this after that uh, this one uh, further undergoes further reduction and the compound breaks and we get the isopropyl amine and uh, acetaldehyde as the products isopropyl amine okay now so we have to uh, what is that um, break like this isopropyl amine and acetaldehyde CH3C11O okay now like that we have to remember when reduction is carried out in the presence of neutral medium uh, finally we get the acetone and uh, ethyl amine first of all the ring opening uh, takes place okay uh, <coughs> so this one becomes uh, ch3 okay na? and this is uh, goes outside and the uh, double bond is uh, what is that uh, <coughs> shifted here okay so uh, ultimately we get the acetone and the ethylene
and here when this uh, substituted uh, thiazole is subjected to the reduction of the sodium borohydride uh, we get the uh, a saturated pimemmer uh, cyclic ring like this okay na? next uh, we go for the oxidation this is uh, somewhat simple to remember okay and uh, we go for the oxidation when 2 comma 4 comma 6 triphenyl thiazole is treated uh, with oxygen in the uh, with uh, methyl alcohol and rose bengal we get the uh, benzyl and uh, benzamide derivative benzyl and uh, benzamide derivative like this so we have to break okay na? so from this one we get benzyl and from this one we get the benzamide and when uh, it is oxidized uh, with uh, chloroform and uh, methylene blue in the presence of chloroform and methylene blue we get n comma n dibenzoyl thiobenzamide so look at two benzoyl groups are there so that's why we call it as the n comma n dibenzoyl and this is benzamide but in the place of oxygen no sulfur group is there so that's why we call it as the thiobenzamide so n comma n dibenzoyl thiobenzamide okay and uh, when this uh, thiazole is uh, treated with the hydrogen peroxide uh, what is that we get the thiazole anoxide thiazole anoxide and uh, it also shows the ring expansion reactions also here thiazole is treated with the diiodo alkene alpha and omega so here iodine is uh, attached to, with, um, to the first and the last carbon so that's why we call it as the alpha comma omega diodo alkene so first of all we get the n substituted compound and we call it as the uh, omega iodo alkyl thiozolium salt omega iodo alkyl that means here iodine is present at the last carbon and when is it treated with the aqueous NaOH ring expansion takes place and we get uh, this compound look here here uh, 1 2 1 2 and here 4 uh, carbons are there so 1 2 3 4 so like that here ring expansion takes place and this uh, last carbon here uh, will be attached to the sulfur thank you for watching